So now we're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, APIs and moving from insights uh, that we get using Spotfire with the Runtime R engine, understanding those insights on big data at rest, uh, and then uh, uh, taking those rules and models and, and publishing out to, to fast data in motion using some of our event processing products. You know, part of this process involves using our APIs uh, and accessing data in a, a variety of ways. Uh, you know, Spotfire allows you to access data uh, by bringing it into memory um, through information links. Uh, we can leave the data where it is and do in database aggregations as offered by the database vendor. Uh, we can also do data on demand swapping uh, data into memory by marking or clicking or filtering on a Spotfire analysis and dynamically swapping that data into memory. Uh, now you can bring in local data sources very easily, just drag them onto the palette. Uh, you can make uh, information uh, links, uh, which are parameterized dynamic queries, a meta layer for uh, reuse, uh, and then uh, also leaving the data where it is, as I mentioned, doing in database uh, analytics and doing things through uh, through the SDK as well. There's not a data source that we can't um, tackle and bring in in a very convenient way into Spotfire. Uh, and in particular, the Hadoop area is something, uh, is an area we've made a lot of investment in, uh, in terms of making this easy for the business user, the citizen data scientist. Uh, we won the Best in Show uh, Strata Cloud Era uh, Award for Best Advanced Analytics Application for allowing you to point and click your way through a distributed uh, cluster computing analysis um, where Spotfire automatically writes out the mapper or you're, you can specify the reducer from point and click or extend that and then run that distributed analysis on the nodes with the TIBCO runtime R engine being uh, installed on the nodes and Spotfire managing through point and click that um, map reduce job. Um, and also uh, on the Spark side of things um, in a similar type of way. TIBCO R has been uh, embedded in, in Hadoop, in a Cloud Compute Grid, um, our CAP products, workflows uh, solutions like NIME and LavaStorm, into RStudio, Teradata, Stat Services, and so on. Uh, and this uh, extension into Apache Spark is, is very low level integration. We integrate uh, with Spark, Spark SQL, but also with, uh, with Spark R using uh, TIBCO R as the compute engine. Um, and being able to run uh, jobs with uh, TIBCO R on the nodes of the of the cluster. So there's that aspect of uh, APIs and data access. Um, and then the, the other part of the next section, uh, we're going to get into using the map chart in, in, in very uh, innovative ways. Matthew is going to cover that. So our map chart, as I showed you earlier, for geographic maps is, is uh, highly functional, but you can also set up a schematic. And this is a helicopter where we're doing analytics on top of the different parts. Here's a, a manufacturing process, actually a refining process with crude oil coming on the left, a refined product coming out on the right, and being able to do analytics across the various stages of that. Um, very useful for machine management, uh, predictive maintenance, uh, those sorts of applications, uh, giving you a front end uh, visual on those, on those processes. Uh, so, uh, so yeah, I'm going to hand off uh, now to, um, uh, to Matthew and, Pete, uh, and Andrew uh, for, to do this next section. Um, so Andrew, can you, uh, can you take it away? Hello and welcome to this section of the TIBCO Advanced Analytics Meetup. So first of all, I'm going to cover why you would use Iron Python with the Spotfire APIs. Then, as well, by way of an example, I'm going to show the custom sort order API. And after that, I'll show some Iron Python authoring improvements that have been released in recent versions of Spotfire. Following that, I'll just show a couple of Spotfire updates, Spotfire styling and themes, and annotation and collaboration as two new features. So why use Iron Python with the Spotfire APIs? We covered this in the last analytics meetup, but here's a recap with perhaps a slightly different angle. We can apply customizations and automate multiple tasks with a single click. For example, change axes, create new visualizations, set colorings, update color rules. We can also produce analyses customized for users. The Spotfire API is 
very rich and it enables us to extend the features of the web player and roll up multiple user actions into a single click. We can also work with data, for example, setting custom sort orders, and that's the example I'm going to show, so show shortly. We can set filters or mark data with where clauses. We can also load data and refresh data. Once Iron Python scripts have been authored, they can also be automated with the Iron Python Automation Services extension that we've developed, which allows us to automate Iron Python scripts with automation services and apply scripts at the time of publishing. In Spot 57.0, we introduced a new custom sort order API. It's important, and it's not that well known that this actually exists. In the past, it was not possible to programmatically set a custom sort order, so this could lead to unexpected sorting. If you didn't know all the values during analysis authoring, and then the data was refreshed, any new values that weren't originally present in the column will not be sorted properly. This API now, now allows the sort order to be set, e.g. Via, via an algorithm or an external lookup table. We can automate this via Automation Services Run Script extension, or via an onload Iron Python script, which is triggered from JavaScript. If you want to know more about how to automate such a script, please contact us after this meeting. Now I'm showing a really simple spot fire analysis of fruit. And the quantity on the y-axis is the number in the basket, and the x-axis is the name of the fruit. Now using Spotify, you can sort the bar chart by value, like this, but that's not what I actually want to do. In this case, I want uh, the x-axis to be ordered by the size of fruit. So we've got the diameter of the fruit in the data, and this table plot shows the, the fruit in the correct order, but without a custom sort order, we can't represent it in the bar chart in order. So what we can do is edit the script. It needs to iterate over the data table that contains the information of the fruit. We create cursors for each of the columns and then use those cursors to iterate over the data table. So here we're iterating over the data table and getting the current values of the rows out of the data table. So we've got the name of the fruit, its diameter, and color. As a little bonus, I'm going to do something with the color, which I'll show you later on. So what it's then going to do is build up a, a list of the fruits. It creates a new fruit object. We defined a fruit class earlier on in the code. Here's the class that represents the fruit. It just contains the properties of those fruit. And once the fruit have been assembled into uh, an array, we can then sort the fruits using this Python function here called sorted. And we now have a sorted array, which is sorted by the diameter of the fruit. Then um, we're doing some stuff with some colouring, so I'm just going to come back to that in a minute. Once we've got the list of fruits in in diameter order, we're then going to create a, a .NET list of those fruits in order. So we'll just add those to the to the uh, to the .NET list, and then set the custom sort order on the uh, column itself in the in the original data table. Now that's a pretty simple one one line call that just sets the the, the custom sort order and uh, according to a, a, a some kind of list that can, or other .NET collection that can be iterated over in order. I said we were doing some something about coloring. As I was writing this example, I thought it'd be really nice to actually color the uh, the bars in the in the bar chart automatically. So you can see that we've got this color column: blue, yellow, red, green, orange. So at the same time as we are um, collecting the the fruit into an array, we're also um, getting their color. In order to set the coloring on the bar chart, we're going to get the the bar chart as a visual object. and then we're going to clear the colouring axis and then for each fruit we're just going to set the categorical colour 
for that fruit and just using the system color that matches the color that we've listed in the data table. If I now click update sort order, that's going to do two things. It's going to apply the custom sort order and it's also going to color the bars. So now that I click this button, you can see that the bars nicely appear in fruit size order. You can also see the colors applied. Yes, OK, so they're pretty garish colors, but this is just by way of an example. You probably want to choose some slightly nicer colors than, than bright yellow, for example. Now, if I were to refresh the data, plum has been added to the list of fruit. But of course, our sort order isn't yet updated for the bar chart, so plum appears at the bottom, even though we can see it here in the correct order in the table plot. So if I were to click the update sort order button again, you'll see plum nicely reorder itself here and adopt the color purple. So there have been several significant improvements in Spotfire Iron Python authoring since Spotfire version 6.0. The first is improved debugging. So if there's an exception thrown, you can get access to line numbers and a proper stack trace. There's also a new dialog for managing scripts, which is accessed from the Edit Document Properties menu, and also a one-click to trust all scripts button. You can see here I've loaded a DXP file, and Spotfire is telling me that some scripts are not trusted. And it's asking me whether I want to review them now. So if I click Yes, a new dialog pops up within the document properties, which allows you to manage the scripts. And what's nice about this is it also allows you to manage scripts outside of property controls and buttons, so the scripts can be independently maintained without having to be uh, tied to buttons. Now you can see that all these scripts are not trusted. I can go across. There are no Java. There's one JavaScript here actually in this in this uh, in this file, uh, uh, but most of them are in Python. I can just individually review the scripts and trust them in the same way that was always possible, so that's now trusted. Or I can just, with a single click, if you trust the source of the Spotify file, you can just trust all. And click OK. And now those all those scripts are uh, are trusted. And now I'm going to show the new enhanced Iron Python debugging facilities in the Spotify Iron Python editor. This script just raises an exception. On line 5, the raise exception function will be called and that's just going to raise this exception. So if I click Run Script, you'll see that uh, we have a proper stack trace. So line 5 was the line that, that called the function, and line 3 was the line that actually raised the exception itself. Spotfire 7 can now be themed and styled to suit your design. Every aspect of the visual styling is customizable, so we can set colors and fonts, background images, stars and colors, borders, visual layout, and many other visual elements. Once you've designed a theme that you like, you can then apply the style of that DXP to another file. Here are some examples of Spotfire themes. I'm not going to discuss each one of them in detail, but I just want to show you each one of them in turn so that you can see some of the sorts of things that are possible using the new Spotfire 7 theming and customization engine. This is an example of an analysis that's had a light blue theme applied to it. You can see that we've styled all the fonts and all the borders mm. and all the backgrounds to give a nice consistent theme for the whole analysis. I can apply the standard Spotfire light desktop theme. I can apply a dark theme which comes with Spotfire. Or I can go back to the custom theme. And for within the custom theme I can edit this. Let's say I want to change the background color of the visualizations. If I click on details, visualizations general, then I can change the background color to whichever color I like. I could go from a light blue to a light gray, for example. 
And then I would go through all the other elements of the style and update it to match. So I could change the visualization borders to be grey. I can change the border width. I can even set it so that there's no border at all. And then I can change the titles. I could change the, the font size here and the font style. Of course there are many other styling elements that can be applied as you can see here, but I won't go into all of them today. If I have a theme in another file I can quite easily apply that. Just import the theme from a file. So here's a grey theme. Now that theme has been applied to this current dashboard. Now I'd like to cover a couple of Spotfire 7.5 updates. The features I'd like to cover are collaboration and annotation. These allow users to annotate visualizations, to comment on, comment on and also discuss the visualizations. It's a new ability to attach the annotations to the visualizations and they can be styled and placed anywhere on the visualization. The collaboration also allows conversations between users and conversations are recorded alongside the visualizations. We're using the new annotations capability in Spotfire 7.5 to tell a story about the life expectancy and urbanization of India and Vietnam. So if we click on this link here, you can see that we have a comment now on the visualization that in 1960 Vietnam had significantly higher life expectancy than India. If we then move on to 1965, we can see that, in, that life expectancy increased in both countries. Life expectancy in India was increasing faster than in Vietnam. The important thing about these comments is that they also represent the state of the visualization. So by switching through the comments, we're actually applying marking to the visualization, which allows us to tell a story. The, uh, the data represents the comment, and the comment represents the data. Spotfire 7.5 also introduces the concept of conversations. Conversations can be had between users uh, discussing aspects of the analysis or the visualizations. So here you can see these two visualizations have tags associated with them that, that indicate that there's a conversation and a new topic um, since I last checked. So if I click on this here, we can see that there's a comment and I can actually reply to this comment. So you can see that that was the original comment and another user replied there and I can say something like I agree with with root and I can actually include the analysis state in the reply. I can look at all the conversations in all visualizations so I can have a complete record of all of those and I can click on these. This is a this is one that actually represents the, the analysis state. So these comments and conversations are contextually aware.